Good morning, everybody. Is there anybody out there? Good morning. Ah, I see a paper, couple of people in the cheap seats back there. Uh, welcome this morning. May peace abide with you. This morning is a celebration of past hopes, prayers, and dreams. John 3, 1 to 36 says this. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Could you tone me down a little bit on the uh, is feeding backs up? Uh, man named Nicodemus, ruler of the Jews. The man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher sent from God. For no one can do the signs that you do unless God is with him. And Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus said, How can a man be born again when he's old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a man is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So we're going to join in some praise and worship this morning. Uh, please join us. You are, are free to sit in your seat, stand up, dance in the aisles. We don't care. Just lift your praises up to the Father. And Lord, may you accept these praises as a sacrifice to you. Amen. Well, you can stay in your seat, but I'm going to ask you to stand. <laughs> so do what you're comfortable with, but this is when I say, go ahead and stand your feet this morning. <laughs>
about you guys, but there are some times this life brings darkness. And you know what? There is only one thing that I have found that helps me get through, and that is finding the joy of the Lord. I mean, there is happiness. There's things that we can, we can do here on this earth that, that can bring us that temporary fix. But it is the joy of the Lord that is our strength. Amen? That is what is sustaining us. So if you're finding yourself in a dark place this morning, I want you to remember that his joy is available to you. And the same God of the Bible is the same God that we have now. He has not changed. We have. Culture has. The things that we do day to day has changed, but he has not changed.
Jesus, we just ask you, Lord Jesus, to send your spirit this morning, God, to fill each heart, Lord God, with the same miraculous power that you've had from the beginning of time, with the same power that created the earth from a whisper. God, touch each heart right now, Jesus. Each situation, Lord Jesus, I just ask you to send your spirit to breathe new life into it, Lord. To breathe freedom into it, to breathe healing into it. Lord God, whatever the need is this morning, Lord Jesus, you are the same God. Hallelujah.
sure how everybody how everybody normally does church but I like to follow the Holy Spirit when we do church here so this morning we're going to sing that bridge again and if that is something if that is something that is resonating with your soul this morning I just pray that you're able to really receive from the Lord altar is open and sometimes when we receive gifts we come to the altar sometimes we need prayer and sometimes when we receive gifts from the Lord we just open up our arms and we just take it it's that symbolic motion of saying God whatever it is that you have for me this morning Lord Jesus I am on board I will take it so this morning we're just going to sing this one more time receive his Holy Spirit in this place today. God is moving in this place. The altar is open for those who have a desire to come to the altar for prayer. His Spirit is moving. Let us come receive it. Come and believe it that through Christ your Redeemer that you have that power that, he have, that we have that resurrection power to lift us up from the things of life that we're going through from the bondage that we may be experienced. So come receive it today. The altar's open for those who desire prayer. For me to be standing here, it takes power right now. What I've been through and what my family been through, we lost a loved one on the same day of the funeral. My sister had a heart, my older sister had a heart attack. So come receive that blessing from God. Come receive that we can remove the bondage and the chains that may be holding you back today. Amen. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time. We thank you for your spirit that's moving in this place. We thank you for your Shekinah glory, oh God, that's moving in this place. The fire that we are being set ablaze of. So, Lord, let your spirit, let your glory go throughout this place. May we become carriers of your glory, O oh God. Bless us on today, dear Lord. Bless the man of God who will come and preach the word, dear Lord. Bless each and every song that is being sung today, Lord. We love you. 
We give you the praise. We give you the glory for this day. For those who came to the altar, for the young, young, young girl, dear Lord, we pray blessings over her life, dear Lord. Touch your people right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Have your way in this service, Holy Spirit. We love you. We give you praise and glory for this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Siobhan, as always. That was absolutely beautiful. Kiddos, I think you guys can be dismissed this morning. Go upstairs for Kids Church. Oh, they're hanging around. Oh, okay. So I guess if you guys can be good, you're hanging around today. <laughs> okay, so for anybody that don't doesn't know me, my name is Tasha, and I'm a deacon here at the church, and we are going to do prayer and praises together. So who has a praise to shout to the Lord this morning? Yes, Kathy. Wonderful. Good. Good. Woo! <laughs> Congratulations, guys. That's amazing. You guys are what we all aspire to be, so congratulations. That is fantastic. For those that couldn't hear that, um, we've been praying for Miss Audrey. She is uh, a beloved person of ours, for those that don't know her, um, and she is battling cancer right now. Um, but she is on a path to recovery, to healing, to beating cancer's butt, and we are praising God for that. And we also praising God that Kathy and Jim this Friday are celebrating 50 years of marriage. That is amazing. Yes, yes. Anybody else for a praise this morning? Yes, Crystal. Yep. That's amazing. That's okay. Okay. Praise God for that. God's uh, constant protection over us all. Okay. Um, for those that couldn't hear that, Crystal had a praise. Um, we've been praying for Crystal for some time to uh, be able to secure a home, a permanent home, a forever home, and she has been granted that blessing. So that is amazing. We are um, all rallying around her in excitement. But um, also a praise um, she listed, gave us this morning that uh, Hope was in some uh, very imminent danger yesterday. And um, that sweet baby is still with us. So praise God for his protection over that sweet little girl. Who else has a praise? Oh, the kids are going up now. Okay. Have fun. Love you guys. Yes, Lisa. Go ahead, honey. So by the 11th, you should know a green light. Oh, they're starting construction. I'm sorry. With the fans, honey, it's hard to hear you. Okay. Okay, wonderful. Yes, yes, and we will be keeping that in our prayers, but also praise God that he is just paving the way. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. absolutely keep that in prayer. Um, Lisa had two this morning. She's praising God because her and Michael have been um, opening, on the path to opening a new Fox's Pizza up in Newcastle. And there has been setback after setback after setback. But she said on the 11th, construction is supposed to begin. So they're talking mid-end August. So praise God. He is just 
lighting that path up for them, but also a prayer. A friend of Lisa's at work um, had been having some health issues. She suddenly passed away. She has children. There's no father in the picture. She's not sure of their faith situation. So just lift that family up in prayer because they need covering right now. Uh, anybody else for a praise? Go ahead, Mom. Yes. Same day. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, mom's praise is my stepdad just had uh, total knee replacement and um, amazing medicine is the man come home the same day and was moving on his own like blows my mind God has given people so many insanely crazy brains that they come up with these things it's awesome so glory to God for that um, but prayers that mom can keep her sanity through tending to her husband over the next couple weeks <laughs> anybody else for a praise this morning yes Abby Go ahead, honey. Wonderful. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, God's got it, babe. And we are going to pray it up and down. We are. Um, this morning, Abby would like us to um, keep in prayer that um, the boys are just, they got a lot going on, you know, blended families, there's a lot in there. So just prayers for those boys that they continue to just go through this with flying colors, that they are just blessed and they are just well taken care of. And then uh, praises that Nico is potty trained. I know from a mama standpoint, how awesome it is when you get a baby potty trained. So praise God for that. <laughs> Yes, dear, go ahead. or praise rather that God is just blessing her socks off by putting so many awesome people in her life and in her school community and it's just such a blessing to her and that is so true and so awesome I love that anybody else with a praise yes Crystal go ahead yes yes wonderful wonderful that's amazing that's so great. Okay. 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 So we had a praise, Crystal, we've been praying for uh, work staff with her, and it seems like God is healing, God is improving the conditions, they're able to return to work. And we also have a prayer, um, We'll just say uh, for people struggling with addictions. So keep that in prayer, please. Oh, one of the people you take care of. I can, I'm sorry. It is so hard over the fans to hear you in this hair. So, okay. So nursing rehab, but we're still praying for addictions. I mean, we pray for those all the time. So that was just the Holy Spirit reminding me. So we're going to go with that. <laughs> Anybody else? I saw another hand over here. I thought for a praise. Is there a hand over here? No? Over here? John, did you have one? Okay. Okay. Absolutely. We've got a prayer for a friend who's having issues with walking and legs are giving out. And I mean, that's an awful situation to be in. So we'll absolutely add that to our prayers. Anybody else? Praises. Anybody else? Prayer requests. Oh, yes. Go ahead. Yes. 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 We were praying for that this morning before we started church, and what a blessing it is. So thank you. Um, that was a praise just for um, uh, Grace Beloris uh, and how she had a heart to bless so many people. Um, so we give God all the glory in that situation 
that he has faithful followers to listen to what exactly he wants and blessings just run down the line. So praise God for that. Anybody else for a prayer request? Yes. Lift him up in prayer. When is the heart valve replacement? August. Okay. We have a heart valve. Oh, July 17th. July. Well, that's coming up pretty quick. We have July 17th. Um, we've got a heart valve replacement. So we are going to be praying for the Lord to just be all over that, guide that situation, those doctors and those nurses, 100%. Did I see another one back here? Yes, mom. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, keep my niece, Lena, in your prayers. Um, she had had a scratch she was dealing with, and um, her eyes swollen shut, so she's in children's this morning. So keep that baby in your prayers that everything's okay. Anybody else before we go to the Lord in prayer this morning? Yes, Carol. Okay. Mom, tell me what Carol's saying. It's hard to hear over the fans. <laughs> okay, yes, yes. Yes, so we are going to be praying for that. We are praying for Ernie. He is starting therapy, and the sweet man lets his anxieties build up, and then he quits his therapy, and it can't do him the justice that it needs. So we are going to be praying for that. Yes, Pastor Dave. Yes. Absolutely. We're also going to be praying for Pastor Dave's son as they've got a lot of movement going on in jobs and in life. So just keep him lifted up in prayer and the family lifted up in prayer. Anybody else? Yes, Chrissy. Yes. 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 Is that it? Those two? two? Okay, we are going to be praying for Chrissy's sister's family, just for general prayer, that the Lord would continue to protect, provide, and lead them. And also for our, our brother, Angel. Um, we love him, we miss him, and we hope to see him soon. Anybody else? Yes, Chucky. Okay, who put that on Facebook? Pastor Mary. Okay. Pastor Mary had shared last night that there were two um, children or young people hit by um, a vehicle on bicycles, right? Okay. Um, so we are going to be lifting those. Oh my heavens. They were hit by a semi. Um, are they still in the hospital with us? Okay. So one was released from the hospital, which is in a miracle of itself, and one's still in the hospital. So absolutely be adding that to your prayers. Okay, anybody else this morning? Yes. Sure. Yes. Yes. Well, hey, we need Jesus for everything, babe. So give it to him and he's gonna help you. But we are absolutely gonna be lifting that up in prayer. Indecision. Life is rough, especially when you're a young person. So we're going to pray for indecision over each and every young person in here today. And um, lastly, I'm going to go ahead and add, we've been praying for my eyeball, for those that didn't know. I've been dealing with some issues um, in March. I was hospitalized. But the Lord um, has been setting me on a path for, you know, um, some more healing. I'm able to see better. I had like a blind spot, if you will. It's still there. I did get a professional diagnosis. Um, and the medical field is telling me it's permanent. It's not going to go anywhere. We don't know why it came. We have no idea if it'll leave, but we don't think it will. And we don't think it's going to travel to your other eye. So awesome. You know, that's a good prognosis. Um, but I am still believing God's going to heal me. I don't know if it's going to be tomorrow or in heaven, but he's going to. So thank you for your prayers. But if you think about me, just lift my left stubborn eyeball up in prayer. Anybody else, lastly, before we go to Lord in prayer this morning? All right. If you guys would take a moment to prepare your hearts, bow your heads, and go to the Lord in prayer with me this morning. 
Oh, Father God, we love you so much, Lord. God, you have blessed all our socks off immensely. I know a lot of these people personally, Lord, and a lot of them I don't. But God, I just know in life how much you've blessed each and every person, Lord. Just waking us up today, Father God, with breath in our lungs, your breath in our lungs, Lord, is a blessing of itself, Father. So we thank you for that, Lord. Lord, we give you all the glory for everything in our lives, Lord, for every blessing, for every, just everything, God. God, we thank you for the people that are here today, Lord. Some of them we see all the time and some of them we see occasionally, Lord. And we just thank you for the blessing that each and every one is to our extended family, Father. We give you glory for the church family you blessed us with, Lord, because each and every person here is part of that, God, and we thank you and give you glory again for that. This morning, Lord, I just got such an impression on my heart from the Holy Spirit, Lord, that we need to just be praying for desperation on the hearts of these people in this church this morning, Lord. So, Father God, I pray that each and every heart that can hear my voice this morning, Lord, has a desperation for you, Lord, has a need for you, Lord, has a feeling of just worthlessness without you, Father. Whenever we're too far from you, Lord, that we just feel that ache and that pain, and we are drawn back to your word and to your spirit, Lord, and that we never very far fall off of that path to righteousness to you, Lord. God, I pray for protection on every person this morning, Lord. I pray for the indecisiveness, Lord Jesus. I pray for everybody that lifted up a prayer request this morning, Lord, whether it was sickness or life concerns or spiritual guidance, Lord, or whatever it is, Father, you know them all, God. And we are lifting them up to you right now, Lord. We are lifting them up to you in faith, knowing that you're gonna handle each and everything, God. We know that we can lay them down at your feet, Jesus. We know that you are gonna handle it, that you are gonna make a way, that you are gonna bless us in the meantime, Lord, that you are gonna bless us so that we can bless those around us, Father. We thank you for that. And Lord, for every praise that was lifted up, Lord, we give you glory for those and for so much more, Father God. For those that weren't even shouted out this morning, Lord, you know the thoughts of our hearts, God. Glory to you for that. And we give you praise and honor for those as well. Lord, I pray for protection, healing, wisdom, discernment on every person in this room. I pray for guidance, Lord. I pray that you just light their paths up so bright, Lord, that there is no denying which avenue they're supposed to take in you, Lord. Not of the world, but in you. And don't let the world distract us, Lord Jesus. Let your light shine so bright that every other light that's not of you is absolutely dim, Father. God, we thank you. We love you. We need you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. And with that in mind, I'd like to tell you a story about another hero of mine. I have a lot of heroes, by the way. A uh, story about Simon Fraser and the personal piper to him. He was the 15th Lord Lovett commander of the British First Special Service Brigade, and he was on the Normandy beaches. The guy I'm talking about was Bill Millen. He was just a normal guy. He went into the battle at the Normandy beach armed with a small knife tucked into his sock called a ski and duke, about that big, and a set of bagpipes. It was the evening of Monday, June 5th, 1944, as the armada of almost 5,000 ships stood off the southern coast of England primed and ready for the greatest amphibious invasion in history. The long-awaited liberation of the Nazi-occupied Egypt was right happening right then, and the combined British, American, and Canadian armies were starting an assault. The craft stretched to the horizon. At one of the many embarkation docks on the mouth of the River Hamble, Commanders of the 2,500-strong British 1st Special Service Brigade clambered aboard 22 landing ships that would take them across the English Channel and land them on the beaches of Normandy. One of the soldiers was Bill Millen of the Cameron Highlanders, the personal piper of Simon Fraser. Despite the rule that pipers were not allowed, forbidden expressly to pipe to blow the bagpipes during battle at the front, 
because of the tremendous losses that they had during World War I. Bill Millen played. When he first mentioned the rule of Lord Lovat, he was told that those were English rules and they were Scots. And so the rule didn't apply to them. A little less. Wearing a battle dress tunic and the kilt of Clan Cameron, Millen stood on the bow, took his pipes out of the box, and started playing the old Scottish song, Road of the Isles, as the landing craft steamed into the harbor. A sailor relayed the music over the ship's loud hailer, and the seconds the sound carried across the water, sailors and troops on the other landing ships, tense and fearful that they may soon meet their deaths, cheered and threw the helmets into the air. Nearby warships joined the refrain. The Royal Navy Hunt class destroyers played a hunting we will go. And the free French destroyers responded with Marseille. The only bagpiper and the only kilted soldier and the powerful Allied Armada was 21-year-old Bill Millen, who stood and played on that landing craft alone. Lord Lovat's brigade went ashore under heavy fire near Colville. His commandos had discarded their helmets and put their distinctive green berets with their regimental badges on. The man behind Lovat was struck with a bullet. The face dropped dead beside him. Millen jumped into the water up to his armpits. The man behind him was hit and sunk into the sea. And as he floundered towards the beach, he shouted, Give us high little laddie, man! And shivering in waist deep in water, Bill Millen put the mouthpiece to his lips and started playing as he struggled through the surf pushing the floating bodies of his dead companions out of the way. When he reached the water's edge, his commander standing on the sand with the brigade major asked him if he would play the commandos ashore with the road to the isles. <clears throat> and Millen recalled later, anyhow, I started the pipes and I marched up and down. Amid the thump of mortars, the shouts, the blood, the death, the wine and machine gun fire, Millen strode back and forth coolly along the beach, skirling, while Men streamed past him and bullets sang around him. Most of the astonished soldiers on the beach cheered and waved when they heard the pipes. That's the stuff, Jock yelled some of them. And one D-Day veteran, <clears throat> Tom Duncan, recalled, I should never forget hearing the skirl of Bill Millen's pipes. It's hard to describe the impact it had. It gave us a great lift and increased our determination, as well as the pride we felt. It reminded us of the home and why we were fighting, what we were fighting for, giving our lives for, for those loved ones across the sea. And after the initial assault on the beach, Lovett striding along casually with his walking stick, Bill Millen playing beside him, the commandos trudged towards Benneville, exposed and always keeping a sharp lookout for snipers. Lovett turned to Millen and told him, Piper, start playing them pipes again and keep playing as long as you can until we get to the bridge, for the airborne rangers are sitting there and when they hear the pipes, they'll know we're coming. He started squirreling blue bonnets over the border and the commandos marched on. After crossing marshy ground under heavy fire and clearing two enemy bunkers, they eventually approached the Kian Canal and the River Orne Bridges. And the fighting continued on for days with Bill marching and piping at the lead with Lord Lovat, who walked along through all the bloodshed as though he was taking a stroll on the beach back home. And Bill is referred to often as the Mad Piper because he acquired that name because they asked the captured German snipers and they said he was a madman. It's bad luck to kill a madman. None of them would shoot him. I wonder what he was thinking as he was scurling along the beach and later as he, he was realizing that he was the herald that sounded to the overwhelming troops that relief, salvation was coming. See, Bill was a hero. Standing there and bravely playing on the pipes, he encouraged hundreds that they needed to fight. And he, pilled, he played the, the uh, lament at uh, Lord Lovat's funeral in 1995, donated his pipes, and when he passed away in 2010, at the age of 88. So why am I telling you this story of a guy you've never heard of? Are you, are you asking yourself that question? It struck me when I first heard it. And the spirit quickened something inside of me when I read about that lone brave man walking at the head of the commandos during a battle and how that one man seemed to turn the tide unarmed. See, the timing of today is being a few days after July 4th celebration and a few weeks after July, June, I'm sorry, June 6th, 1994 invasion date, the battles of Normandy. Could be a reason to ponder this. 
But they're not the main reason. You are. As you go through your lives, you may be called to do something incredibly brave. Or maybe not. The point is that your skills, when you have the bravery to stand, will be seen and marked by others. I doubt if Bill ever thought he would be called to use his piping skills in such a way when he was a lad and he learned to play. The lessons, the knowledge, and the skill acquired by him had a powerful impact. The lessons, knowledge, and skill acquired by you with the help of this scholarship will also have an impact. And you are called to use it to your best advantage. Grace passed it on to us so that you, wherever you may go and whatever you may do, that you may use it to glorify the Lord. Whether or not you realize it, you are the answer to a prayer. Your history has not yet been written, but as you go through life, remember that you were crafted by the creator of the cosmos with a specific task that only you can perform, only you can achieve. There are no mistakes. There are only God working the way through what we think is folly to bring glory to him. You have a specific task, something that no one else, no other person in creation has the ability to achieve. You've been blessed already in some ways. The call now is for you to go and bless others. The best blessing you can bestow is informing others of the love and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. So wherever you go, wherever you wind up, remember that it, as you go through your career, you too are heralds of Christ. And don't forget the prayers of grace that you are fulfilling. Like her, she planted seeds into the future. You are called to plant seeds into the future. You may never even see them. You'll see them someday. Doesn't matter if you see them now. Back to Bill for a minute. I remember all the brave biblical singers as well that the Lord commanded to go out in the front in all these many wars. Joshua tells the story of another epic battle. Now Jericho was shut up inside and outside of, because of the people of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, see, I have given Jericho into your hands with its king and mighty men of valor. It was kind of a strange thing to say because they were locked inside and, and they couldn't do nothing. But then he went on, he said, you shall march around the city and all the men of war going around the city once. Thus you will do this for six days. Seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram horns before the ark. And on the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times and the priests will blow on their trumpets. And when they have made a long blast with a ram's horn, when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout and the walls of the city will fall down. And all the people shall go up everyone straight before him. Now, does that sound like battle commands? Does that, if, if the command, how many people have been in the military? Anybody here in the military? It, your commander says, okay, get a trumpet. We're going to go into battle with trumpets, and then after a certain time, we're going to all yell, yahoo, the walls are going to fall down and we're going to be victorious. Do you think the priests knew of that task? that God was going to have them do before God spoke to Joshua? They were all standing around, wondering what's going to happen. Far too often we make the mistake of dismissing our influence on others. Those musicians probably thought their music would be inconsequential. Bill Millen could not have seen the impact he would have had on that beach. It's impossible to see the impact you will have in your life, but you will affect others one way or another, as you go about through life. We are called to proclaim the word of the Lord and shout the good news. Some will sing, some will follow in the van like the Allied ships that battle day, taking up the call after someone else was brave enough to stand. Some will march at the front as anointed leaders, unperplexed as they perform a duty in calm leadership in terrible times. Some will walk boldly beside them and have a far greater impact than they could ever have imagined. Some will just step out and say, here I am, Lord, you can use me. Jeremiah says this, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans of welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. 
many will not see the changes they start it will be only through subsequent generations in time that their offerings will be seen but you will have an impact on the world remember to seek the Lord and call upon him as you go forward everyone has been called to use their talents their gifts and most will never be put to the test until the day arrives one that they could never could have imagined if you allow me to use the metaphor of Bill Millen's bagpipes and the song of our hearts as we go through life I will remind you that the battle often fought in the flesh ultimately fought in your soul it's for all for all souls and for eternity to be a herald is a spiritual assignment given to all those who have been reborn not as flesh or blood but of the Spirit of God I pray that all of you know the power and the awesome love our Father has bestowed upon you.